What's up, .NET developers? I know we're all excited about some of the cool things that are coming in .NET 8 for Blazor, like server-side rendering, the new unified template, and so much more. We're going to go over some of those new things right here on what's new in .NET in C Sharp with Isaac. Hey folks, Isaac Levin here with another edition of what's new in .NET and C Sharp with Isaac. We're going to be going over all sorts of the cool .NET 8 and C Sharp 12 things that are coming out all the way up to .NET Conf, which is in November of 2023. And if you're liking these sort of videos, be sure to comment down below, subscribe to my channel, and share with your friends, and maybe they can do the same. And one of the things that I'm very, very excited about, I've talked about it a few times already, is server-side rendering in Blazor, right? There's a ton of things coming out in this space, and I I want to go over some of the new things that have come out in the latest preview. So let's just get right to it. I'm going to share my screen really quick. And the first thing that I want to talk about is the new unified template. So we talked about this in a previous video. So if you haven't seen that, be sure to click the link up here and uh, take a look at what the new unified template is and, and how we can get started with it. So one of the things that happened with the unified template is that you could turn on or off uh, interactivity uh, in server mode, right? So uh, that was only available via the CLI, but now it's available via the Visual Studio Create New Project um, wizard, and we can actually validate that. So let's actually go up here, right click this project, uh, solution, add a new project. And this is going to come up. And then if we scroll down a little bit, we have Blazor Web App. So click Next here. And then we have it that. And then we have this option. So if we click here and zoom in, so we now we have this option for use interactive server components. And that's going to add a couple additional things to our template. Like it's going to add that counter class and it's going to have that be server uh, mode render and all that sort of great stuff. So um, to learn more about that, like I said, click the video. Um, that's going to be in the description down below. And that's one thing that uh, came out with the latest preview. And let's talk about some other things um, really quick. And one of those things is talking about like, form model binding and validation with server side rendering. So if you remember in a previous video, we talked about this when it was first rolled out in a previous preview. And there were a couple of things we had to do. We had to, you know, uh, do this dance with a cascading model binder, and we had to add parameters. We had to handle those that form input um, in our actual code. But that's actually been made a bit cleaner in the latest preview of uh, ASP.NET Core uh, 8. And let's take, just take a look at that. So I'm just going to open up this project that I have here. Um, and it, one thing that um, I want to call as I've, I've added some code here and I'll kind of walk through what this code looks like. But the most important thing is I have um, a handful of um, new Razor components that I've created to basically facilitate interacting with a SQLite database, adding um, and are listing and creating out movies. So if you see here, I have some models. So I have Blazor Movie Context and a movie.cs. So that is my model that I'm using here. And then I have in my pages, uh, uh, folder, I have a movies uh, subfolder inside of there um, is where I'm doing some stuff with movies. So let's actually just take a look at what we're doing here. So if I open up my index dot uh, razor, as you can see here, I'm using quick grid, which is a component that's been made by the .NET team to facilitate listing data in a, in a really quick and, and painless way. If you haven't seen that, there's a video and I'll proceed, proceed I'll, I'll be sure to put a link to that as well. So um, basically all this does is this just lists out my movies. The real uh, interesting thing around form model binding and validation is done in this create uh, .razor class. So let's just actually go through what we're doing here in a couple of steps. So the first thing that we're going to scroll down here, so we have all of this code. And if you remember when we were adding forms um, or uh, doing any sort of like posting or things like that in a previous video is that we had to do, we had to basically create an event handler and we had to do a data validator and all these sort of things. And that's actually done for us out of the box now by adding, if I scroll down, there is a new um, attribute called supply parameter from form. So what this will basically do is this will say, okay, and then um, you specify that up here. Oops, close this out. You specify that up here in your edit form, um, in your edit form uh, tag. So basically what I'm doing here is I have a method post that um, has a model to validate and that model is movie and then on valid submit, I'm going to call an add movie uh, method 
that I have here. So if I scroll down, we have this add movie method here. So let me just zoom in here. So basically all that's gonna do is it's going to add that new movie to our database context and save it. And then it's going to set um, a Boolean property to true, which basically um, has these uh, little display saying a movie was added. So in all in all, what this does is it makes it a bit cleaner. So let's actually just run uh, our application and see what this looks like. All right, so I'm gonna move over here and make this a bit bigger. And then as you can see here, I have this movies direct, I have this movies route. And then inside here, as you can see, I'm using the grid. Um, if I click this create new movies, as you can see here, it's a simple form. So I'm just gonna put in a movie. So let's just call this uh, aliens. And inside here, I'll just pick any date. And then I'll specify that this is a horror movie. And then it's uh, $5. So $5. So when I click create here, as you can see here, it says movies added to list. So there's no additional like weird form submit in our URL anymore. And it's been routed. So if I can go back to my list here, as you can see, um, I have this new movie that I put in there. So that's a really, really cool thing that's been added. And there are a couple more things as well that I'd like to show. Another exciting thing is to this point, we've been specifically doing rendering from a server perspective. There hasn't been support for Blazor WebAssembly yet, but in the latest preview, there is. And there are a couple of caveats, and we'll go over that in a second, but um, there's actually a sample, and I'll make sure to put a link to it in the show notes, of kind of wiring this up. And let me actually just open up Visual Studio and show you what that experience looks like. So right now, I'm in Visual Studio. Let's just close all this stuff to go through everything. So this is a, a solution with two projects. So I have a client project, which is a WebAssembly project, and then I have uh, Blazor app, which is a, a, a typical Blazor web app project. If I take a look here, the client says it's using the, um, the Blazor WebAssembly SDK. And I'm referencing um, the client project from our, our referencing a client project inside of the web app, right? So let's just take a look at first the client uh, project and see what we're trying to do. So what we want to do is as you can see here, we're using the WebAssembly host builder and doing all that interesting thing. And then if we look at our counter class, so in our counter class, we have the counter that we're very accustomed to. Um, we have a parameter where we can specify how much we want the increment count to go up by. But as you can see, if we scroll up at the top, we have this new attribute called blazer, or I'm sorry, render mode WebAssembly. So we've had uh, render mode server up until this point, but now we have a new attribute called uh, a WebAssembly. Uh, so now what we do wanna do is when we reference that in our projects, we'll need to do a couple of things. So as you can see here, there's been some code commenting out. So instead of having the add server component extension on the add version components, um, method inside of our services. So we're now adding add WebAssembly components. And then we'll do the same thing down our map razor components extension, our, where instead of we're having a uh, server render mode, we have WebAssembly render mode. So that's all that we need to do to light up um, interactive rendering with WebAssembly. So if I go over to our index uh, component, as you can see here, I have a um, I'm making reference to that counter component and I'm specifying an increment count of two. So if I run this and what we'll see here is we're actually going to see our index page with that counter that we're referencing from our client project directly in here. So if I do that here, it says uh, current count is uh, goes up by two every time. And if I wanted, for instance, update that, I could go in here, specify this. So as you can see here, the increment count is set to one by default. But if I want to change this to say like five and then run this again, what this is gonna do is it's gonna change our increment count to uh, five. So move that back over. And as you can see there, look at that, right? So that's just another thing that's been added. So now we have a, a better story for um, WebAssembly. We already had a, a pretty decent story for um, server render mode, but now we have WebAssembly mode as well. So that's another cool thing that's coming out in the latest preview. And finally, the, the, the last thing that I'll talk about is now there is a uh, new way to declare how we want our components rendered. So previously, uh, up until this point, like if I go in first look at my counter, you know, we're hyper dependent on, oops, let me just close on that. 
we're hyper dependent on adding this attribute to all of our components. But what if we want to specify whether we want our components to render um, it, from the actual calling component? So for instance, you know, from the call site. So like instead of having to do it at each individual component level, we could do it where the component's being called. And how I can do that is let me just remove this. And then if I go back over to my index razor, so now there is a new directive that we can specify. So I can actually go render mode and then change and then have this render mode be uh, render mode dot WebAssembly. So what this will actually do is this actually does this uh, the same thing as doing it on the at the component level, but now we can do it from where we're calling. So if I run this again, we should have the exact same experience. So our application will run, and then we'll have that uh, particular counter increment by five. So it just gives you some more flexibility as to how you want to specify where your, how your components are being rendered. And that's a really, really cool thing. And you can do this both on the server side as well as WebAssembly side today. So that's really, really exciting. And you know, as I wrap up, I think it's really, really important to talk about, like there are some, there are gonna be more things coming out for Blazor uh, WebAssembly, Blazor Server, server-side rendering, all the way up to uh, .NET Conf. And I'm excited to hear what you're building and what you're excited to see. So be sure to uh, like this video, uh, subscribe to my channel, comment down below, share with your friends. Let me know what you're building or what you're excited to build with the latest bits in .NET 8. So that's it for me. I'm Isaac. Take care.